Hello, my name is Candy. I haven't been on booktube for a really long time, but I thought to start my channel back up again, I would do a kind of a mid-year wrap up and think about the books in the last, in the back half of the year that I have really, really loved. Um, and then looking forward to the rest of the year, thinking about books that I'm really keen on reading, whether they be recent releases or books that are coming out later on and think about just how the year looks with reading in general. So how this video is going to work is that I have a number of books that I have enjoyed and really really loved in the past six months and I am also going to talk about books that I'm really looking forward to reading in the next six months. Yeah that will be it. The first book I want to talk about is If I Never Met You by Varya McFarlane. So this is a rom-com. The main character is a woman called Laurie who at the beginning of the novel is very suddenly dumped by her partner of 18 years um, called Dan and the worst part of it is that Dan is also a colleague at her law firm, at the law firm that they both work at, and as a result, their personal life is now fodder for office gossip. In the height of all these horrible feelings, the confusion, the betrayal, as more information about their breakup comes to light, she meets Jamie. Jamie's new to the firm and he's very, very ambitious and wants to make a partner, but in order to do that, he needs to be seen to have a conventional, acceptable lifestyle. They make this kind of quid pro quo where they pretend to date each other. Jamie to, to to be seen to have this lifestyle and to be seen to have a partner that he's serious about for Laurie to get back at Dan. It's a fake dating story guys. What I love about this book is that Byron McFarlane is such a strong writer. When it comes to rom-coms, which this book is a rom-com, you know what the beats of the story are, you know where your destination is, but the fun is in the journey. And I think with Byron McFarlane she truly is the master of her craft. I feel so strongly that her writing is so witty, it's so sharp, it's so observant. It's very, very razor sharp on the dynamics between men and women. What I found strongest about this book is as the book goes on and Laurie kind of meditates on her relationship with Dan, she thought all this time um, from the beginning of their relationship, which started when they're at university and she's 36. She thinks for all this time they've had this equal, equally yoked relationship where they both give, they both give themselves to each other equally. But as she meditates on their relationship more and thinks about it more, you really see how Dan has actually, in many kind of small ways, hurt her and made her feel less than and didn't really appreciate her for who she is. As a result, she didn't really kind of come into herself and realise how much of a gem she truly is. As her her and Jamie's relationship develops you really see the development of Laurie as well and watch her understand how much of a great person she is really see the difference between herself with Jamie and being someone who asks for what she needs and herself with Dan the other things that she always delivers on the romance as well like I thought that Laurie and Jamie had great chemistry I really loved the development of from being, being people who didn't really know or particularly like each other to like acquaintances in <laughs> in kind of um, revenge to being genuine friends, to being people who fell deeply in love with each other. That romance is so gratifying. Particularly when you're paired with the real pain that Laurie goes through because this breakup is real and that's the other thing is that she doesn't skimp on the pain of the breakdown of an 18 year relationship. I really loved this book. I think you will too. I will always be beating the Vary McFarlane drum. Guys, join the band. <laughs> The next book is Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. Such a Fun Age is about Amira, who is a young graduate, 20 something, who is a little bit kind of lost in life, not sure where she wants, what she wants to do with her life. She has a couple of part-time jobs, one at the university that she graduated from and the other as a babysitter for a woman called Alex. Now, Alex is a writer, a blogger, and has kind of an ideal life, but does feel a, a little bit dissatisfied with how things have turned out. She's not in New York anymore. She's not kind of of the girl that she once was. One night, Alex calls Amira to come and take Briar, the child, while she deals with an incident. It's the middle of the night, Amira's not prepared to babysit, but she goes and for the extra money because she likes the job and she likes the kid, because why not? So they're in the store together and because Amira is a black woman, babysitting a white child, security guard approaches them, starts questioning Amira and things escalate from there. This book is such a, it's so unexpected, it's so, funny and it's so sharp as well. It develops in ways that I wouldn't really expect and I was reading it so fast because it's such a compelling book. It almost feels like there's so much bottled up drama in it even though nothing ever escalates to melodrama. It's this kind of exploration of privilege and projection of insecurities onto people and 
violating of boundaries. Also this kind of weird exploration of what it means to kind of be a good person and also what it means to be an ally and how it's so easy to, for people to slip into being performative without really doing any reflective work and exercising any semblance of self-awareness. The other thing I really liked was the portrayal of friendships between women in this book, particularly friendships between black women. I think it's just like, I felt so, I loved the way that these women spoke to each other, the kind of dynamics between them which is slightly different from person to person because it felt so realistic. The way that these women talked to each other, the way they hyped each other up, the way that Kylie read so expertly crafted the dynamics of a friendship group where some people have started their career and some people are, are are kind of still kind of unsure about what they want to do and the tensions that sometimes arise out of that was so well done this book asks a lot of questions and doesn't necessarily give you the answers but it really takes you for a wild ride like it honestly feels like a bit of a roller coaster but it's so fun i really really recommend it i would also say that the t author tweeted a few months ago that the book actually started a fight in a hair salon and I'll link it down below but again this is such a great book club book club book I read it in my book club and it was a really fun discussion so yeah I totally recommend this book the next book I want to talk about is Daughters of Nuri by Renny K Amaya look at that cover just look at it I think it's beautiful and probably the nicest cover that I have seen this year so Daughters of Imri is a fantasy novel based on West African mythology it follows a world where gods once ruled but were defeated in a gruesome war and as a result humans now kind of look to the ill a god amongst men as their saviour. However, unknown to everyone, gods left their two remaining descendants on the earth, two sisters separated at birth, one called Nala and one called Sinai. Sinai lives in the palace of the Eze. She is presumed to be noble born, but because she doesn't have a family, because she doesn't really have a name, she's kind of tolerated, but not necessarily accepted into the true elite. Whereas Nala lives in a very remote village and she starts to realise that the Eze is going to remote villages like her own and killing all the villages and slaughtering the villages and taking advantage of the fact that communication can't be carried out to the cities to make this message known and as the story proceeds you find out more about what really happened in the war who these women are what their role is on earth and what the destiny of these women are in relation to the fate of the world i thought this book was so so enjoyable it felt like i was really reading a story <laughs> It feels, it feels kind of silly to say but it felt like one of those big epic stories but the characters are so well drawn and so likeable and so relatable that I was really grounded in their characters and their specific character journeys as well as the wider story which is the perfect balance for fantasy that is exactly what every fantasy needs I feel. The world is so cleverly rendered I'm so in awe of the authors but also how interesting and how cleverly put together this world is. I loved the relationships between different women in the book. For example, there's a relationship between Sinai and this other girl who she considers her rival. But as the story goes on, you kind of see them understand more of each other and just understand why they have kind of, through essentially misogyny, they have been kind of been have been set up to be rivals and how they it's better to use their strength as one. I can't say enough about it really. It was such a fun ride, like it was such a fun read. This is the first of a series and I'm really looking forward to seeing how the story develops because I'm really invested in not just the story but also the character development of the two women. I really really loved it, fully recommend it. So the other book I read was The Other Bennett Sister by Janice Hardlow. This is the story of Pride and Prejudice and the years afterwards told from the perspective of Mary I actually found this book quite sad in parts because you really see that Mary really moulds herself in reaction to where she feels that her sisters fall short and she does this essentially because she wants to be loved and she wants to be accepted so for example she makes the observation that okay my sisters all have these roles they have these personalities and they are loved and all are all seen as beautiful but what I can make up for my lack of beauty or my lack of charm is I can be really educated and I can be really 
really logical and she does that in particular to appeal to her dad who sees her younger sisters as frivolous and silly but has his own relationship with his older daughters she's like okay let me be the smart logical intelligent one who is very dedicated to her studies and you see you see that this doesn't quite work for her there's a scene that is very popular in the book and the movie and the tv show and all the pride and prejudice the pride and prejudice extended universe <laughs> where mary is playing piano at the ball at, at netherfield and her dad says to her you've delighted us enough and it's kind of played off in the book and in most of the adaptations as quite funny but you see in the book that it's actually quite heartbreaking and you see how hard she's been working to get that right and you see just she as a person is quite socially awkward mary as a person doesn't always understand social norms even though she is quite perceptive you really see her struggle in this book to find her place in the world especially in relation to her sisters and especially when all her sisters get married as you know in the books lizzie jane and lydia get married and in this book as well kitty gets married not long afterwards and then their dad dies which isn't a spoiler it kind of happens very early on and she's kind of left and she doesn't have many choices she goes through a real period of like I'm, I really have nowhere in the world I have no one she does have this really interesting relationship with Charlotte Lucas which I think is which doesn't quite play out how you think it will seeing as they're both seen as ugly ducklings which is like what is that really but yeah I really enjoyed it I do have to say I think the first half was stronger particularly as you recognize the story of Pride and Prejudice and you recognize Mary's place in it and you get to know more you, it's kind of like a, it's like a little treasure trove in a house that's already full of treasure <laughs> because Pride and Prejudice is already so loved so it's lovely to get more of an insight into that story the second half is a bit different and really departs from the original story and i think it's still worth the read and it's still strong but i think i really liked the character study of the first book but i was ultimately loved to see mary come more of the woman that i think she's kind of supposed to be and actually meet people who treat her with kindness i also want to give a shout out to the gentleman's guide to vice and virtue now this is a book that has gained many Many, many awards it came out a few years ago it's a bestseller it's, it's I think lots of people know the book The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue follows Monty who is being bred to be a gentleman and take over his father's estate however his father keeps on catching him drinking he's a big gambler he's a big player he generally looks for a life of pleasure and probably most scandalous scandalous of all his father keeps on finding him in bed with women as well as men monty kind of wants to have this like last hurrah and wants to have this trip around europe with his best friend percy who he's also deeply in love with his father also gives him an ultimatum of like you screw up one more time then i am not leaving anything to you this book was so different than what i expected at its core it's an adventure story the trip to europe goes spectacularly wrong and they kind of get sent on this adventure filled with pirates filled with the underworld filled with uh, marginalized communities in europe it's also this very delicate love story between monty and his best friend percy who are deeply in love with each other but they haven't really found a way to communicate that clearly to each other and then the other thing which i found really heartbreaking is that because of really the abuse that monty is at the receiving end by the hand of his his father and it is abuse Monty has kind of numbed himself over the years and is actually kind of flirting with alcohol dependency I would say through all their adventures it's it's Monty and Percy coming to realise their feelings for each other but it's also a story of like healing and learning how to be a person who can really feel their feelings without resorting to life's pleasures to numb out the pain that Monty goes through as a result of not being accepted for who he is and his sexuality not being accepted. I really felt for him in this book, I really did. And I found the book really, really touching so much more than I kind of expected it to be. And the last book that I want to talk about in terms of books that I have read and loved is America is Not the Heart by Elaine Castillo. America is Not the Heart is the story of Hero, a woman who immigrates from the Philippines to San Jose, California to stay with her uncle, who she always looked up to. Throughout the book, you get snippets of Hero's life in the Philippines and what led her to immigrating to live with her uncle, what led to her immigrating to the US. So Hero grew up in quite a wealthy family in the Philippines and she goes to medical school, becomes a doctor. She joins a guerrilla warfare group in the new people's army and spends about a decade with them and this 
eventually leads to her being emotionally and physically tortured, left with that trauma. And because of that defection, she also becomes estranged with her immediate family. And this ultimately leads her to the US to stay with her uncle, who she's always looked up to, who is also a doctor. When she gets to the US, she meets Roni, who is her uncle's daughter, this eight-year-old. And it's the development of their relationship that kind of starts kind of bringing her to life again. Beyond that as well is the friends that she makes, particularly with a hairdresser called Rosalind, who is the opposite of Hero in that she is so full of life. She is very sociable, she's very extroverted. It's through this relationship with Rosalind that Hero becomes acclimatized to her life in the US and also starts to deal with some of the trauma of things that she went through in the Philippines. This book is uh, the best book I've read in years. Like even that small summary doesn't really, I can't really, I wish I could hold everything that this book gave me in like the palm of my hands and like speak it into existence. I just loved this book so so much. This book is such a wonderful intimate portrayal of not healing from trauma because that's not necessarily the hill that the book is trying to crest. It's like the falling of Hero and really opening up her heart to love and to friendship and to family that truly accept her and love her for who she is. This book also kind of really cleverly links um, big traumas, big generational traumas such as war, such as poverty, such as lack of access to things and the fear that that instills in you from a very young age and links it to intimate traumas within families that carries from generation to generation. I should say this book starts off with an interlude from Paz who is the wife of Hero's uncle and she grew up in a totally different way to Hero. She grew up in very very deep poverty and it really sets the tone for the book in terms of you kind of understand where everyone is coming from. Within the Philippines and even within the Filipino community in San Jose where Hero settles there are so many different experiences of imperialism and colonialism and I learned so much about Filipino history. I just loved this book. It's the best book I've read in years and it's hard for me to articulate why I loved it so much but I love stories about kind of reckoning with stuff in your past. I love stories about how friendships can really change you and also there is a beautiful and queer love story in this book that is slow burn and takes time to grow and form. It's so beautiful when it, it happens. It's the best book I've read in years, I keep saying it, and I'm so glad that I picked it up from the charity shop before lockdown. So now I'm gonna talk about books that I'm looking forward to reading, and I have two to talk about. The first is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. Britt Bennett is the author of The Mothers, which came out a few years ago, which I absolutely loved. The Vanishing Half is her second novel. The Vanishing Half follows two sisters who are born into a rural southern black community in the US. And they end up running away at the age of 16 and their lives take on very different paths. One of them ends up back in the town that they ran away from. One of them is leading a life passing as a white woman and her white husband knows nothing of her past. The book follows the paths of their lives and also their daughter's lives and, and kind of deals with the reckoning of their two lives once again meeting and what that means for both of them. I have started this book and I have to say reading a Brit Bennett book honestly feels like you're sitting down and listening to like the world's oldest storyteller. Like she, it feels like someone has sat you down and I'm, is like I'm gonna tell you a story. I know that kind of feels weird to say, but that's how her writing is. You just get sucked in so immediately. There's something about her her books, even though they're modern, that feels so, it feels like her books have this, have old souls, if that makes sense. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to reading this one. And I think given its success, that it will really stay kind of within popular culture for a long time. And that's my hope for Britt Bennett is that she has a very long and successful career. So the next book I want to talk about that I'm so, so, so excited to read and probably the book that I'm most excited to read this year is Love in Colour by Bolu Babalola. The subtitle of this book is Hails from Around the World retold. So Bolu takes tales from Greek mythology, from Nigerian folktale to South Asian legends and re retells them all into love stories um, that reflect our age. Bolu is a TV writer and producer. She is on Twitter and I think that's probably where she has most of her following. She's so smart, she's so sharp, she is so for decolonizing our idea and concept of love and also just joy as well. 
her tweets for a long time have brought me so much joy and have made me reflect on so much and I'm really looking forward to reading her first published work and really looking forward to her career as a whole. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Please comment down below with books that you have loved this year, any disappointments, just tell me what's up. Wherever you are, I hope you're having a great day and see you soon. Bye!